<clears throat> okay, well, what I want to talk about today is um, SD cards, Secure Digital, and uh, I'm trying to open this box, that's why I'm messing about. I got a couple here, I'm sent for a couple and I've put a couple of bits and pieces in the Baines kit so I haven't got as many as I thought I'd have. But they're um, secure digital cards there. These are adapters. I don't know. Yeah, they're adapters. And the reason they're adapters and they're empty at the moment, you can see down the bottom there. Um, the reason that they're empty is because I've got them in equipment. <laughs> But uh, uh, that's what I'll be talking about anyway. And uh, there's three various, there's, well, there's three types actually. There's a SD, SC, which is Secure Digital, uh, the standard card, which is the one that most people use and buy, and they're quite cheap. And um, there's um, an SDHC, which is a standard, is a um, Secure Digital high capacity card which is used for most things like cameras and stuff like that and then there's the SDXC which is the extended capacity one I will say extreme capacity but you know what I mean if I say extreme it means extended I, I, I get a little bit mixed up but before I wanted to, the three that's the three of them and then there's a, the ones there there's a micro there's a mini and there's also a micro disc which fits into the standard cards um, which I'll explain in a, in, a, in a few minutes. But uh, before I start that, I want to talk about um, the operating systems. Now, all these computers had operating systems. There was DOS, there was Windows 3, uh, Windows 95, Windows XP, Vista, Windows 7 and Windows 8, which is a very new one coming out now. And uh, they ran on things like well DOS was its own operating system that what that was a disk operating system it ran on floppy disks and that's when you had the chunky graphics and they, they come down and you played bat and ball with a thing and it took about a fortnight to load in and the Windows 3 was the first one where they used GUI which is a graphic user interface where they had the icons and things like that and then you got a little bit better with 95 and Windows XP and Vista was the one where they started to extend things where they started to Windows the Vista one never took off I don't there was uh, lots of reasons for that, but um, in between DOS and uh, Windows 95, they started using different operating systems from DOS, and they used um, operating systems like um, what they call FAT12. Well, FAT12 just means that the blocks that they, they, they do, they put into the operating system to make the operating system work. So when they put the data into a, into a disk, it goes on in blocks or segments and uh, the first one was called well the, the only one I, was DOS obviously I only know FAT12 I don't know of any earlier ones than that and uh, FAT16 which is just about finished now FAT32 which is still in and still it will still go for a long time and one which I'm talking about well I've, I've just learned actually it was in Vista and it's in Windows 7 and it's in Windows 8 and it's called XFAT and that means extended, extended file allocation table. And that's what it means. It means they allocate the files to fit onto the blocks within the operating system that you've got. Now, they've all got good things. I mean, um, well, I won't go into that in a minute. I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about, uh, um, yeah, I, I'll talk about the capacity of an SDSC card. Now a standard card, a standard SDSC card, when you see that, that's what it means, SC. It's only the SC you're interested in. There's only SC, HC and XC. The SD just means secure digital. So you've got secure digital um, standard card, secure digital high capacity card and secure digital extended card. And the secure digital um, standard card holds between one two and four gigabytes so you can buy that that thing in 
you, well, you could, you could buy them in 250 megabytes and things like 100 megabytes and things like I just forget what they were in now, but you can buy them in lower capacities than that. But they range basically nowadays from the standard card, uh, it's between one, two, and four gigabytes. So there it's that's its maximum, which is not good enough for most of the things. So they went when you got into cameras and things like that, you need um, stuff like SDHC performance which will go from 4 to 32 gigabytes so that will hold um, you can buy them from 4 8 16 32 gigabytes uh, now then I use the old camera the old um, um, Panasonic camera and it, it, it's okay and it runs okay but when you're transferring files to and from because they're, they're so big, I mean, 12 minutes is about 4 gigabytes. So if you're talking about 4 gigabytes, and SDHC will only move 4 gigabytes at a time. So they've gone into a thing called XFAT, which is the Extended File Allocation Table, which is the SDXC um, card. And that will go much bigger. And that will hold um, from 32 to two terabytes theoretically I haven't seen a two terabyte one I've seen quite big ones but the biggest one I've seen is 256 megabyte so 256 megabyte is absolutely massive for a little card like these but uh, 64 is a standard number I've got two 64 ones so I haven't got them yet I'm waiting for them coming and um, I'm going to put them in my camera and one in my um, Panasonic uh, camcorder uh, so you can download and take things off. They move things around pretty fast. I'll talk about that in a minute anyway. And then of course you've got the mini SDs and the micro SDs. And they're exactly the same except they've got a little card which fits into things like uh, mobile phones and all this new P PDA things that they're walking around with. And they've got to have smaller things that they'll fit into or what they call them. But you need that, that this thing here which is uh, the adapter. The adapter doesn't do anything it just holds the mini card and uh, you pop it in the bottom there in in that position there there's a little a little recess there and then you can plug it into your machine so as you can chat you can um, download stuff onto it and take stuff off it that's all that cards for so the actual card is in me in me in me gubbins in me, me bits and pieces um, there is another one called SD10 or IO, SDIO, which is a it's secure digital input output and it's used for uh, PDAs, GPS modems, uh, barcode tuner readers, TV tuners uh, and they, de they tend to connect to a USB device before you use them and I haven't got a lot of information on them because um, I aren't using them at the moment so I haven't seen a lot on it, but once I get a little bit of information, I shall uh, I shall let you know, and um, we'll go from there. Now, the these cards that we've got, the SDHC, the SDSC, and the SDXC, they come in certain classes, and what that means is that the speed that they run at. So they run from it, when you look on the thing, it's got a, a C with a number two in it. It means it's got it's running at two megabytes per second. So it will it will uh, download information at two megabytes per second maximum. Um, if you see one with a four in, that will run at four megabytes a second. And six, it will run at six. I don't know why there isn't an eight. There isn't an eight. Um, so I haven't seen an eight yet anyway. And it says there aren't any, so it must be right. And there's an, the best one of all in the class, this class, is the 10. And uh, it runs at 10 megabytes a second. So that's, that's a hell of a, a speed. But uh, fragmented drives, if you, your drive is fragmented, I'm pretty sure you know what I mean by that. If, you, if your information on your drive is all over the place, because you do a defrag to stop this, if it's all over the place, it will take a little bit longer to take your information down. But uh, if it's... If you've done a defrag, it will run that little bit faster. I don't know how much difference it makes, but I mean, it must make a difference, or else I wouldn't have men mentioned it. There is another card just a little bit higher than that, <laughs> and uh, it's a UHS-1 card. 
and it will run at a maximum of 50 megabytes a second. That's ridiculous. That's five times faster than the best of the class, the, class, the other classes. And there's a new one that will run at the US, uh, the UH, ultra high, ultra high, <laughs> ultra high speed uh, two card, which will run at 312 megabytes a second, theoretically. Um, that's a little bit, a little bit out of date for me, but uh, that's uh, I aren't, I aren't. I haven't got my head around that one. So, and uh, what else have I got? Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, these, I've got this a little bit round, but I hope you can understand what I'm talking about. Now, when I was talking about the earlier systems for the file allocation tables, FAT16 is used in, it's an early one, and it uses um, DOS, uh, Windows, and it's got XX9, which means it's up to the nines. It's like uh, Windows 95, Windows 97, is it? I forget now, and Windows, um, I forget, I just forget what it is. Um, uh, and there's a FAT32. Uh, which does dual booting. They all do certain things very well, and they, and they do other things. They've got limitations. And there's another one called the NTFS, which is a new technology filing system, which is you've been using for years and probably haven't known about it. Uh, that one only supports files up to up to four gigabytes, so the FAT16 and 32. But NTFS supports files over four gigabytes and hard drives over 137 gigabytes. And it's all to do with formatting drives and stuff like this, so they're all better than something. But um, FAT16 will mess about and move large cluster sizes. They're, they're the things within the filing system, they're called clusters, so you can move them around. They're certain, they're certain sizes, that's why they're called a cluster. And uh, FAT32 has easy data recovery, so obviously um, NTFS doesn't have a good data recovery thing, so if you want to recover data that you, you might lose, um, you need FAT16 or 32, and uh, if you want speeds for bigger drives over 4 gigabytes, you need NTFS. Depends what you want them for. Um, XFAS, XFAS, Extended File Allocation Table. Uh, it started in Vista apparently, and it's in Windows um, 7 because there's a thing called booster drive. So if you can see booster drive, it, it means when you put it into your flash drive, um, your flash, you, you can do things with your flash drive to make it bigger and run faster and etc. etc. Um, yeah, FAT32 can only format a drive up to 32 gigabytes. Uh, the maximum file size in the FAT32 is 4 gigabytes so the maximum file you can get in any case is only 4 gigabytes this is why it, they run tend to run slow and also FAT32 is limited by the files it can hold I think it's about 65,000 so many so many so many I just forget now um, and XFAT uh, extended file allocation table which is the one we've got in Windows 7 it was not uh, designed for formatting hard drives it's considered for flash memory storage and other external devices. It, this is why it's not really a competitor to NTFS. So it's just taken off, but it's not. It's not going to go into um, anything big. Yeah, FAT32 uses less resources to run. NTFS is complex and uses more memory to run, and it uses more power. And uh, basically, XFAT is used for flash cards so that's a little run <laughs> rundown on the cards but what I wanted to talk to you about really was the the SD secure digital standard card the secure digital high capacity card and the secure digital extended card which are the three that I use mainly at the moment so if you see what they are, and if you've got class 10 on them, you know what I mean. If you've got UH1, you know it's extremely fast. And it might not work in, in your machine, so watch what you're buying when you buy these cards. The standard card that you need to buy, uh, if you want anything and you want to stay safe, is the SDHC. 
anyway i'll shut up there i've gone into 40, 14 minutes and 43 seconds so i'll see you later guys <laughs>